What's going on guys and welcome to today's video and today we are not in my garage but we are in my good buddy John's garage and we are with his 2006 Porsche 911 and today we are going to be installing a set of cluster overlays or they're basically a replacement face for the factory gauge cluster. Now this set is from Vinoxy.com. They actually have quite a few different ones you can pick from and it's not just Porsche. They've got BMW, they've got Audi, they've got Porsche and they actually have motorcycle gauge cluster overlays. So there's quite a few you can pick from and you can even special order and have different colors. It's it's pretty cool. You'll have to go on to Vinoxy.com, check them out and see what they've got available for your vehicle and get some ordered. So today we are going to be pulling the cluster splitting this thing apart, getting the overlays put on, put back in, and hopefully when we hit the key, we've got everything working. That'll let us know that we did it right. So we're gonna get in this thing and uh, tear this perfectly good working gauge cluster apart and make it look a lot better. So guys, first things first, we are going to be lowering the uh, steering wheel and we are gonna be pulling it all the way out just to give us a little bit more room and next we are going to be pulling this lower piece of trim that is underneath the gauge cluster as you guys can see is just this piece right here and to get that lower piece pulled we're basically just going to pinch and give it kind of a firm pull oh my God. so once you get the top kind of unclipped you can you can kind of roll it back get your fingers under each side and then give it a very firm pull and there are about two more clips here on each bottom piece that will finally snap free. Now this lower piece of trim won't come all the way out of the vehicle, but you can at least lower it down enough to get to the lower cluster Torx screws. So now, as you guys can see, we've got two little Torx down here that are just below the instrument cluster. So we will go ahead and get both of those pulled out of there. Now those screws are a T20 Torx and be very careful because if you drop them, it'll be a, uh, a hunt to find them. <laughs> now those screws are a T20 Torx. And if possible, use a magnetic bit just to kind of help grab them so you don't drop them down into the dash. Now that we've got those two bottom screws out, we're going to be able to start getting this cluster worked out of there. Now there are two clips up at the very top that you've got to get broke loose and then it will finally be released. So as you guys saw, I just kind of worked my hands under the back of the cluster, grabbed and then pulled forward and it broke both of those clips loose. Once you get all of those top clips pulled, you're gonna be able to get that cluster slid back just barely enough to see the electrical connector here on the driver's or left side of the cluster. And again, it's gonna be impossible to show, but this little black tab, there is a small blue tab that you push and then you can slide that down. So again, guys, I'm pushing that blue tab and then the black part of the connector We'll slide down and finally we can get the cluster out of there. there we go. Now that we've got the cluster out of the vehicle and we've got our nice new overlay gauges from Vinoxy, we are ready to start tearing this thing apart. Now uh, we're going to start by flipping it over and we've got six T10 Torx that we are going to get pulled out of the back of this thing. Now, once we get those off, we will get our front two cluster buttons off and basically we will just pull straight up and out on those and it will pull just that plastic end off. And now we're basically ready to start going around and unclipping these three clips so we can start to get the clear lens peeled off of this thing. So once you get those two side clips, those three bottom clips, you'll just kind of have to slowly work 
that lens area up. There are just a few other clips that you can't access on the top side of that lens. And next we will need to get all of our needles pulled off. So to get the needles off, I'm basically just lifting straight up. Um, I'm kind of using a screwdriver not to pry against the cluster, but just as something with a little more material to get under the needle. And then you just lift straight off. Now that we've got all the needles off, we're ready to kind of pull the cluster assembly out of this back panel. It kind of helps you can push on the electrical connector here on the back. And then finally get that back cover off. Now that we've got the back panel off and the needles off, we are ready to start disconnecting some of these circuit boards so we can start separating this because what we are trying to get down to are these little plastic retainers that hold the face plates on. So for this main circuit ribbon cable, we are just going to pull down on the black kind of lock tab on that ribbon cable and then we'll be able to just slide that ribbon cable out of the connector. Now we should be able to lift this very back circuit board off of the cluster. And set that thing aside. So up next on the cluster teardown, we are going to need to be separating the circuit board from this plastic kind of bed plate here. Um, on the side smaller gauges, we've got a couple of plastic clips that you're just gonna very carefully lean back and push out of the way. And that will let you lift the circuit board off of that plastic plate. And then on the main board here, there are a bunch of metal tabs that go all the way around. And then on the top, there are a couple of plastic clips. Those are what we're going to need to get loose so we can lift that board off. And then again, in the center of those two inner gauges, we've got a couple of more of those metal spring clips. Now, once you get all of those clips released, like I said, there's a couple of metal clips that are in the center, just like the ones along the bottom. The whole thing should lift off with our side gauges attached. Now that we've got that big main circuit board off, we've got four small springs that we're gonna pull out because otherwise they are loose and you will lose them. And now we are finally down to what we've been hunting for and that is these plastic retainers that are in the middle of each gauge. So we are going to need to kind of push those through so we can release the face plate on the other side. So guys, they do make a kind of special little tubed shape tool that will kind of help to push those retainers out. Um, but what I've kind of found seems to work relatively not horribly is just using kind of a pocket screwdriver and just slowly working one side down and then it will just kind of roll the rest of the way out. So it's not terribly elegant, but it does seem to work. And the face of that retainer, which again, you won't even see, is still perfectly fine. So I'm gonna work on getting the rest of these out and then we'll get it flipped over and pull the actual faces off. So now that we've got all of the retainers pulled out, we can get the actual faces pulled off. Now there's kind of a couple clips. They're just kind of wedged under that you can kind of rock and get those all the way out.
And now we are finally ready for the fun part actually getting to put on. Now these are just going to slide in the factory little tabs just like the original overlay did. And then we'll be able to just snap in those black retainers back into their slots. Now that we've got all the retainers back in, all of them clipped back in place, we are ready to just basically reverse the removal and start putting this thing back together. And this is the time we don't want to forget those four metal springs that we pulled out after pulling that main board because we need to make sure those are in before that main board goes back on. So once we've got those four springs in, we will get the kind of buttons slid over their mounts on the circuit board itself. And then we can try to get this whole thing slid back into place. Now before you go clipping or pushing this circuit board on all the way, make sure you've got all those metal tabs lined up so you don't bend one over or break one. Now you may need to use like a small pick and kind of position those metal tabs a little bit more outboard so it'll help it snap into place. And then on our little side gauges, we will just need to make sure all of our clips are lined up. And we can snap those in also. Now one kind of quick final check before we put that back piece of the board on, you really want to go and look and make sure all of those metal tabs are fully seated because those are actually circuit board contacts on this thing. So again, you've got quite a few to make sure that they are fully snapped over. A few of them weren't fully seated and I again used that small metal pick and just pushed them and seated them the rest of the way onto the circuit board. Now that we're ready to throw this back board back on, you're going to need to be very, very careful because on this board, we've got multi-pin connectors here on either side of it that you're gonna need to get lined up before you fully seat those down. Now once those are seated, we can get our ribbon cable for that front display. And again, we are going to slide that underneath into the connector. And just make sure you are fully seated before you push that metal lock tab. So once we're seated, again, we will just lock in the black lock tab on that ribbon cable connector and then we are ready for that back plastic base plate and this thing like you guys saw just basically sets the cluster assembly down into like that and we can kind of take a quick glance on the back and make sure our connector for the cluster is fully seated now that we've got it slid back into that back plate, we're ready to reinstall the needles. Now take kind of really good note before you pull the needles on kind of their placement. Obviously they're all down at the lowest number in their each respective gauge. And the needles, you'll just get into place And then kind of with a firm press, they will snap into place. So once you're satisfied with your needle placement, we did just take this cluster without the faceplate on, plug it into the vehicle just so we could do a gauge sweep, fired the vehicle up, shut it off, just so it could kind of calibrate itself and see if there were any, you know, parking in any weird places or fin 
or while idling drastically off. Again, it's kind of good to take some pictures before you pull this, just so you can know where the resting place for all the needles are. But like I said, once you are happy with needle placement, you are gonna be ready to clip that top cover back on. Now, just like removal, we've got those clips along the top and then we've got the clips along the bottom. We've got the buttons to get lined up before we get everything clipped back into place. Now that we've got the lens cover snap back on, we can go ahead and get our two buttons reinstalled and those just snap on. And last but not least, we are going to get our six T10 Torxes put back in on the back of this assembly. Now that we've got the cluster all back together, we can get it slid back into place. And we will get our connector plugged back in. Slide that black plastic tab back up. Now you're gonna need to push pretty firmly on the top of the cluster because there's those two metal tabs that we had to originally get pulled back out. So again, push those in very firmly before you get your two bottom torxes thrown back in. And now, last but not least, we are going to slide that lower piece of trim back on. And again, those had those really stubborn clips on the bottom that you'll have to get snapped back in. And then we'll be able to get that steering wheel shoved back into place. And that is it. So guys, here is that final product. And guys, honestly, in this car with the added yellow chrono, yellow shift knob, it's just everything kind of comes together. It's got the yellow center 12 o'clock position on the wheel with the stitching. It just looks really good. And man, fit and finish on this thing is, it just looks factory. It looks like it's supposed to be there and to a unknown suspecting person, they would assume that is how it came everything, all the font, everything just looks perfect and how it should be. Well guys, that install is definitely not for the faint of heart. That is some pretty small component level teardown. You're talking ribbon cables on circuit boards and very, very small stuff, very intricate. Um, it, it definitely was a, uh, a high skill or I don't know what you want to call it, but it was very tedious. Um, everything's in, everything works fine. The overlays, like I said, seem to be very nice quality. It felt like the same thickness and material that the factory overlays were. So you aren't getting a cheap, thin, cheesy product. It feels very OEM. It's just a lot of teardown to actually get to where you need to go. And then you tear down a little bit more and then you're finally there. So at the end of the day, you have a really good looking set of gauges and uh, it, it looks good. You just hope you never have to do it again. But guys, if you want a set of overlays like this for your BMW, Audi, Porsche or motorcycle, check out the link down in the description, hit them up, see which ones they've got, see what custom colors, all of that stuff and hopefully make your gauges look a little bit better. And maybe your vehicle will be a little less uh, tedious to tear down and actually get to them. But guys, thanks for coming along on another Not In My Garage video. And guys, as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.